Have you ever been concerned that maybe the actuarial career isn't going to be a good fit for you? Maybe you're worried that it's not going to be what you think it's going to be. Well, that is totally understandable when you've never really had the opportunity to try it out firsthand. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you three signs that you can look for in yourself to help you determine if the actuarial career is going to be a good fit for you. And that's going to help you move forward without hesitation, without resistance, without second guessing. By the way, I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates so they can get their actuarial dream job as quickly as possible. So now let's get into the video. Three, two, one, go. Okay, sign number one is that when you start a puzzle, you cannot put it down until you're done. Whether it be a crossword puzzle, a Sudoku puzzle, one of those logic puzzles, I love those, maybe a Rubik's cube, maybe a jigsaw puzzle. But whatever it is, if you are someone that cannot put it down once you've started because you just don't like leaving it unfinished and you just want to sit there and continue to solve it until it is finished, then that is a sign to me that you would make a great actuary. This really indicates that you absolutely love solving problems and that you don't give up easily. And these are two really important qualities to have as an actuary. Of course, the exam system is long. It takes multiple years to get through the, all the exams. So that's one of the reasons why it's important you don't give up easily. And the exams are tough. But another reason is in your work, your day-to-day -day work, there are going to be lots of times when you get faced with difficult problems that can't be solved in 20 minutes. I remember multiple times when I was trying to maybe crunch numbers and they weren't working out the way I expected them to, or I was trying to create a program, a code that was supposed to do something specific and it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do and I couldn't figure out why. And it would take hours sometimes to figure out what the problem was, sometimes longer. So truly, if you are someone that could lock yourself in a room, throw away the key and just sit there and solve a problem from beginning to end, then you would make a great actuary. Okay, the second sign that you would make a great actuary is if people come to you for math or tech help. Um, if you are one of those people that people flock to in order to get help in their math or tech, that indicates to me that not only are you really great with math and tech things, but you're also a great communicator. People want to come to someone for help that is going to be able to explain things really clearly and well to them. So that indicates to me that you are going to do well in an actuarial position because yes, the math and the tech is important, but also communication skills are so, so, so vital. This is something that a lot of unguided future actuaries forget about. They forget about the importance of communication. But if you want to become a top candidate, one of those candidates that is eligible for so many actuarial jobs, then you really need to make sure that communication is one of your strong suits. In an actuarial job, you are going to be communicating with so many different types of people. You're gonna be talking to different departments that have absolutely no idea what actuaries do. They just don't understand. It. So you have to be able to break down those really complex concepts that you're doing every day and explain it to someone that has absolutely no idea what you're doing. And in order to do that, it means you have to have very clear and concise communication skills. Another thing about someone like this is that you likely really enjoy helping people. I know for me, that's something I love. I love to help future actuaries get through their actuarial journey to become top candidates. So if you are someone that likes to do this kind of thing, that's an even better sign that you're going to love the actuarial career. We actually in the AAC have a tutoring session where members can come and get virtual help from a tutor that's there available. The tutor's name is Aaron. He does lessons for exam P and FM. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that Aaron is going to make a great actuary someday because people just absolutely love his advice. They are always able to go to him to get a clear and concise answer on the math problems that they're running into for their actuarial exams. So if you've been involved in tutoring and you really liked it, that's another great sign that you would be a great actuary. For this exact reason, I often see a lot of math teachers become actuaries. I would say probably 10 to 20% of people coming into the actuarial career after they've already graduated are math teachers that have done this tutoring, this teaching for a long time, absolutely love it. And now they wanna get into the actuarial career and they make amazing candidates because they have this very clear communication ability. Actually, let me know down below in the comments, are you a math teacher that's wanting to get into the actuarial career? Or if not, what career are you coming from? Or maybe you're student. Let me know down in the comments so I can take a little poll down there and see where everyone here is coming from and some of your background. I'd love to know more about that. Okay, sign number three is that you could spend hours, 10, 20, 30 hours straight almost researching a specific topic that you're really interested in. It means you can go down YouTube rabbit holes for hours and hours just learning more and more and more and more about a certain subject because you find it so interesting and you just want to know every single detail. This is totally me and I'm sure it's the same for 
for many of you out there as well. In the actuarial field, you really have to have a great understanding of insurance and a lot of business concepts as well. The exams, like I said a little bit earlier, take a long time to get through. So if you are getting bored with the insurance concepts very early on, you're probably not going to want to spend years and years and years studying different concepts and different um, methodologies, all that kind of stuff that actuaries need to know to make insurance work. If you are someone that just likes to look at the surface level, know just a little bit enough to get by kind of thing, that's totally fine, but it's probably not what you're going to find in the actuarial career. You have to go deep and you have to learn every little detail you possibly can. For an actuarial career, it's important that you know the big picture. Let's say, for example, you were involved with pricing a new insurance product. You have to understand all the details, how different products are going to react with each other, cause and effect, all the things like that. And in order to have that deep level of understanding, you really have to be able to spend hours and hours and hours invested in learning about insurance and business and markets and all that sort of stuff. If you are a member of the AAC, make sure you go and check out our terms and concepts library because in there, there are tons and tons of videos that are going to help you understand different concepts related to the insurance industry and the actuarial career in general. Okay, now if any of these three signs are relevant to you and you think that you would make a great actuary, then please give this video a thumbs up to let me know. And if you are still kind of teeter-tottering on the idea, not 100% sure that the actuarial career is what you want to do, well, you may be surprised to learn that I actually believe you should go for it anyway. For more details on that, go watch this video. It's an absolute must watch for those of you that are teeter-tottering on the edge still, not 100% sure. And that is all for this week. I will see you in two weeks from now. Bye.